Welcome back folks and welcome back to a new Dragon's Dogma 2 video. So today I feel comfortable enough to review this game because I finished pretty much everything there is and I went through the entire game changing all of the vocations and looking at the story segments and so on. So as always I will be going through a few different segments from gameplay, graphics, story, sound, music, enemy variety, performance, bugs and crashes, microtransactions and much more. Obviously as always you have timestamps below so you can navigate to the portion which interests you the most. So first things first, Dragon's Dogma 2 was a highly anticipated sequel or well follow-up to Dragon's Dogma 1, which over the years achieved a cult status in the gaming community. And one of the strongest segments of this game was always the fighting sequences, fighting the big monsters and actually going throughout the world without your hand being held all the time, so you had to figure out a lot of the stuff for yourself. Now Dragon's Dogma 2 expands a lot on that because initially the first game I believe only had 20 to 30 percent of what developers wanted to include so for me Dragon's Dogma 2 seems more as a full game that the developers wanted to include in the first title but they couldn't so you really cannot consider this as a sequel but rather as a Dragon's Dogma 2.0 which inherently is good. And as it is always, you create your main Arisen, which you are going to control, and your main pawn. Along in your party, you can be joined by two other pawns, which either come from Capcom and they're created and just, you know, going throughout the world, or those pawns are actually created by other players, so the actual pawn system is very nice because those pawns get shared around between more Arisen. And the overall gameplay consists of a few things. First off, changing and using different vocations by fighting different enemies on the map and doing quests along the way. Now, when it comes to questing, I'm gonna talk more about that, but the general rule is, is that when you take a quest, you're gonna be traveling usually quite far to the objective itself to finish it and then go back. And it's the travel between those objectives which is kind of the bread and butter of Dragon's Dogma in general. So that means exploring the world, going off of the beaten path and fighting various monsters including the big ones like Cyclops, Golems, Goblins and so on. And by doing so, you're gonna be entering various dungeons, various fields, and various caves, which usually have a lot of good things in them, which you can pick up when it comes to, you know, armor, weapons, and various other consumables you can use for your gameplay. And I will be honest, exploration in this game is probably one of my favorite things. Most of the time when I had a quest, I usually kinda forgot about it and I started exploring the map to see what happens and what can I see. And behind every nook and cranny, you know, going and f you know, climbing on top of a hill, in actually in a very difficult way, is usually going to reward you with either a chest or a seeker token and so on, which ultimately gets you access to more equipment. Also, throughout the world, you're gonna be collecting various, you know, stuff from monsters or picking up herbs or, you know, mining for different resources which you can later combine or use to enhance your equipment. And there has been some changes from Dragon's Dogma 1 when it comes to vocations in general, but overall I noticed that a lot of them were fun to play. Of course, it really depends on your playstyle, if you wanted to go for a more melee build, or if you wanted to go for a ranger, or a mage, or a sorcerer, well, those things usually find its way throughout, you know, leveling up those vocations and benefiting from them by achieving, you know, better skills overall. And changing vocations in Dragon's dogma is very much recommended because even if you switch back nothing is going to be forgotten and all of the skills which you bought prior to it when you were for example a thief are going to stay and one of the good thing is as it was in the first games by leveling up your vocation you also get various augments and those augments can be used across all characters or well all vocations which you have in your gameplay. And people do this to pretty much create their ultimate character which is going to have the best buffs from all of the other vocations into one which is going to be the most popular and most powerful one. And it honestly feels quite amazing to go after monsters and bring them down, especially how cool that fight can be. Going after weak spots, climbing on top of the enemies and using different spells, 
or the different, you know, stuff which you get in your inventory for consumables to fight those enemies and bring them down in a very cool way. And I also like how anywhere pretty much on the map, you can be randomly attacked by a big monster in case that big monster was flying around. And another bonus in all of that is the pawn system which I already talked about. So besides those pawns fighting with you, those pawns also learn from other risen and including yourself. So if you pick up a chest, if you find a seeker token, if you find a certain cave system, that pawn is going to remember that. So let's say I hired someone's spawn and that pawn was already in some location or they finished a certain quest. They will tell me, okay, this is the quest that you have, I already finished it with another reason, let me show you the way. So you can pretty much point them in the right direction and they will take you to the quest and tell you everything which you need to do. Of course, sometimes it can get buggy. Um, especially when it comes to AI because I noticed one time one of the pawns which was supposed to take me to a quest location went the complete other way around and went to places which had nothing to do with the quest but you know those things don't happen very often and in most cases they were quite useful for a lot of things because if you're walking somewhere a pawn is just going to say hey man there's a little chest over here or maybe something can pick up wanna, wanna see it you say yes and he take you you know that pawn takes you to the actual chest now when it comes to graphics uh, dragon's dogma 2 pretty much retains a similar style as dragon's dogma 1 but you keep in mind obviously it implements um, higher textures and uh, just the better environments overall and higher quality environments including the characters themselves now it has ray tracing it has all of those things but uh, the style of the game including like the terrain looking at the various foliage around the map is pretty much similar to the idea they had in dragon's dogma one and i know for some maybe uh, some of these things are not going to be the highest fidelity graphics but for me it didn't really matter because the overall quality is pretty good and the style is something which i generally like so it doesn't really matter to me all that much I will talk about performance later on in the video though, but uh, at least when it comes to pushing these graphics to the highest, I mean, I didn't really have a problem with it because there's always something happening in the background and, uh, you know, looking at the, for example, cities from far in the distance and looking at various uh, monsters flying around, that was, that was kind of fun. Now the story, obviously I can't go too far into details because, well, this is a spoiler-free review. But some of the things I can tell you without spoiling stuff is that the story was alright, it was good. There has been some moments which were, you know, crazy to be honest. And when I looked at them I was like, whoa, this is somewhat special. There has been some interactions with some of the NPCs and some of the other, you know, people in the game without spoiling it, which were quite cool. Of course, there has been some quest lines which were a bit questionable, to be honest, and the, the, the thing with Dragon's Dogma in general is, is that it doesn't hold your hand. So you have to read a lot of things, you have to pay attention to what characters are saying, because usually that's going to matter a lot. And I'm always for that. Always give me games which don't really guide your hand everywhere. I mean, being that my favorite game was gothic and still is and how quests are done in that game you can kind of assume the style of the quest which i like to do but the problem here in dragon's dogma 2 was that in some cases there were some cutscenes which bugged out and that there was some dialogue which bugged out where i was sitting here and saying like what exactly do i have to do with this quest because it wasn't properly explained so later on i stumbled upon an npc by accident which later like just you know progressed that quest which was a bit strange now of course if you play the game you kind of know what i'm talking about but overall again you know the story wise and quest wise it was all right there again there has been some very interesting characters but in some cases i noticed that some of the quests were almost felt like they were not complete, in the sense that it was a complete quest, it had its, you know, intro and outro and the twist, but uh, I just felt like it was missing something sometimes. But especially later on, you know, as you progress through the game and some things start to happen, that's where I was like, okay, this is very nice, and the presentation itself was amazing. Characters so far, I mean, to be honest, 
There are definitely more memorable characters in DD2 than there was in Dragon's Dogma 1, and um, I think some of them are really well written, while some of them were a little bit strange to interact with, especially considering that um, they know some things and they pretend like it's not happening in front of their eyes, which was a bit strange. But to be honest, when it comes to Dragon's Dogma, story was never the biggest thing here, at least when it comes to quests, but the overall environment and the, you know, world storytelling and the lore is pretty much spot on, so there is a lot of things to learn from, and a lot of things which become very interesting towards the end of the game. Now let's talk about sounds and music. First off, when it comes to music, um, I really enjoyed some of the tracks, especially when you are out exploring, you know, when the combat starts and all of a sudden you have a big uh, cyclops in front of you and you have to fight it and then it gives you certain sound cues if the actual monster gets down. So from that perspective, I didn't really have a problem with it. It was, you know, very nice uh, music overall and pretty much on par with, you know, Dragon's Dogma 1 soundtrack overall, although I still have a lot of very good nostalgic feelings towards uh, Dragon's Dogma 1 soundtrack, which I do think uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 did a very nice job to capture that original feeling. The sounds themselves when you're fighting are quite cool, especially when you're going throughout the cave system itself, and you can really notice uh, Ari Engine here, especially in those dark caves, and the only thing you have in front of you is that little light, and all of a sudden in the background you're gonna be hearing some hissing noise, you're gonna hear some growling, some, you know, big steps walking around you, and usually that's going to be very indicative of where the monster is. And especially going throughout those cave systems during the night, uh, it really reminded me of how Resident Evil does things, and because, you know, Resident Evil remakes were done in the same engine as this game, it really captures that atmosphere well. The night and day cycle in this game, followed with the sounds in the back, they're very well done, and to be honest, at least when it comes to the night itself and how much is actually illuminated in front of you, I think they pretty much nailed that and more games should be doing it that way. One of the other things people were talking about a lot is the enemy variety or well for some people lack of enemy variety. So to best explain what is happening in Dragon's Dogma 2 is that yes you have certain select amount of enemies, those are going to be uh, goblins, wolves, bandits along the road, and when it comes to bigger monsters, obviously the Cyclops, the Golem, Chimera, and so on. So technically, you are fighting the same monsters, but you're fighting different types of monsters, and the best example would be the goblins themselves. So at the start of the game, obviously in the starting zones, goblins are going to be pretty much your standard goblins which you kind of saw everywhere else. They're not going to be fully armored, they're not going to be too big, kind of easy to fight with. As you progress later on throughout the game, you're gonna notice different types of goblins. So there's going to be some goblins which blend with the environment really well, they basically hide on the ground and you don't even notice it's a goblin until you are attacked and they basically jump from the ground and hit you. They almost have this uh, camouflage on them which makes them kind of tricky if you're going through those dense forests. But later on if you go to Batal, which is the second region in this game, those goblins are going to be much more equipped, they're going to be bigger and of course they are going to hit stronger and have more HP as well as, you know, giving you better items overall. This almost includes uh, bandits themselves, this also includes um, dogs, you know, wolves, etc where those wolves are going to change and they're going to be different color and they're going to be well trickier to fight. And this is also the same with Saurians or well the lizard people which you fight in the game, so they're going to have different elements on them depending on where they are, so technically there are the same monsters or well the same type, same archetype, but the difference is that they change depending on the location they are. So for some this might be problematic, for me it wasn't really a huge problem because again, it's pretty much similar to Dragon's Dogma 1. Next up, let's talk about performance in Dragon's Dogma 2 and keep in mind that this uh, review is specifically from the 
PC itself, so that's where I play the game most of the time, and this is where I can give you, uh, you know, the most opinion about it, because uh, I'm still going through the PlayStation 5 version of it. So, in general, performance on PC, especially with the latest patch which arrived, was not the best, and it's still really much not the best. So, even with the configuration that I have, one of the bigger issues is, for example, once you go into the city, where the frame rate can tank a lot. And also, throughout the game itself, I noticed that there are some locations throughout the map, especially in Batal, where those pockets really dampen your frame rate a lot. So overall, even without ray tracing and having DLSS on, you know, the actual performance in the city was mostly 30 frames and outside of the cities it was going to 40, 45 and so on. And it can be a bit tricky, especially if you're fighting in the city. Now outside of the city, I didn't really notice too many issues with it, but of course the performance can definitely be better. When it comes to bugs and crashes, overall I had some bugs within the city itself when it comes to some of the quests, sadly I cannot talk much about it. There has been some situations where some of the NPCs, which were, you know, important for me, were kinda disappearing and then appearing and then disappearing and then appearing, which was kinda strange because they were <laughs> that was happening in front of me, like that disappearing appearing scene which was uh, quite tricky to navigate because I thought my game was completely broken, but luckily it kinda, you know, finished at the end, so I didn't really have a huge problem with that. When it comes to crashes, I had three crashes overall, one crash at the start when I, you know, started playing the game, and two crashes after my latest, uh, you know, update, or well, the update video which I talked about. Besides that, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really had a lot of crashes in this game, although I know that uh, some people were reporting that, um, their game was crashing a lot, so for me, three times mostly that it crashed and uh, I was very lucky um, with my playthrough. And now we arrived at the Microtransaction DLC store. So when the game came out, one of the things which Capcom does is that they include some of the DLCs which are also microtransactions. So those things are going to be items from the game which you can buy including uh, a wake stone, you know, or port crystal and so on. These items you can find within the game itself uh, a lot, so it's not really going to be a huge problem. And you don't have to visit or look at the microtransaction DLC store ever and you're going to have a fine experience. My problem with all of this, and I talked more about this in my previous video, is that it was completely unnecessary because ultimately it created a lot of animosity towards the game where it wasn't really needed to be. So ultimately what you got was a PR nightmare which could have been avoided. And yes, this is not the first time Capcom is doing this, but there is only going to be a few times where you can do it before people catch on to it and it fires back at you. So again, no, you don't even have to look at the microtransaction DLC store and you're going to have a blast and all of the items which you can get from the store, you can get in the game, so please don't spend money on this. Now also one of the big things when it comes to microtransaction DLC store is that people assume that this is where you buy uh, actual fairy stones which allow for fast travel. No, that's not the case. You cannot buy fairy stones which allow you to fast travel. You can buy a port crystal which serves as a basically the marker where you are going to, you know, spawn yourself or well fast travel too because that's how this game does things. You set your own fast travel points and you use fairy stones for it. They're quite expensive, but to be honest, later on in the game, especially, you know, end game stuff, you're gonna be making so much money and having so much, you know, rift crystals that it won't really matter. You're gonna be able to buy those fairy stones very easily. So pretty much at the start of the game and going to the end of the game, well, you can consider those fairy stones and there is going to be a lot of going back and forth which for some people might be problematic because you're tracking the same uh, road over and over and over again. So, I mean, it's alright, in my opinion, but um, it was definitely a few times where I said, oh my god, I have to go back this area again, you know, but it, it, it is what it is. That's ultimately what Dragon's Dogma 2 is. So overall, I think Dragon's Dogma 2 is a very good game. I do think it's a it's a nice follow-up and a nice, how would I say, reimagining, or well, 
rework of the Dragon's Dogma in general because ultimately that's what they wanted. They wanted to make a Dragon's Dogma 2 and include everything which they didn't really have, you know, the budget or the time to include in the first game. And this is one of the games which pretty much scratches my itch. It's open world, it's RPG, it lets me explore and do random stuff, do quests and so on. The game is also... Um, kind of funny and when it comes to the save system which was already the case with uh, again Dragon's Dogma 1 having that you know slot that's pretty much it and it, it makes you know saves coming a bit more difficult so you have to really pay close attention to what people around you are saying or to what you're doing at certain quests because if something does happen well you're going to have a tough time to you know, go and do it again, unless you go back and rest at the inn and so on and so on. Also do keep in mind that right now they fixed the option to start a new game, so yes, even if you made a character you can go back into the main menu and start a new game which wasn't available when the game came out. I really do recommend this game now, of course a lot of it depends on how much money you're willing to spend, so the game right now is definitely not cheap if you uh, go to the Steam and, you know, depending on your region equivalent, um, I didn't really, I had a nice time with this, because I paid the game with my own money, I didn't have a review key or anything like that, that's why this review is kind of late on that, but uh, I'm having fun with this, and uh, would I recommend this? Definitely yes, although, although, if you don't have a good PC or you're not really forgiving when it comes to frame rate issues, then I can also, you know, wait or maybe look at some other YouTube videos where people are uh, playing specifically on the machine which you are playing on or you have the same GPU, CPU, whatever, so you can test it out. Because, well, you know, things like these shouldn't be happening on releases. But, of course, they do sometimes and uh, hopefully now they take this time to really patch the game because uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 is really nice and I really want more people to experience this. So thank you so much for watching, overall it's one of the better games I played this year and I definitely do recommend it, but of course, again, check out the performance uh, before you make a purchase, because I know for a lot of people, spending this amount of money on a game is not really easy to do in 2024, especially considering the economy, so, you know, making the right call is definitely going to be up to you and, you know, your PC or, well, PlayStation or Xbox. So that's everything for today, thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more and comment down below and tell me what do you think about all of this, do you agree, do you disagree, do you like the game, do you dislike the game, let me know down below and also huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone, bye bye.